Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, we're taking a look at the Golgari midrange deck that three Japanese players brought to the MPL Spark Split in week three. The MPL League play is where the best players in the world battle each other for an opportunity to go directly to the top 16 of the next Arena Mythic Championship. I believe that's near the end of June, as I'm recording right this right now in the end of May. And that is worth at least $12,500 to break into the top 16 of that event. So they're competing for serious stakes. And the Japanese players in the tournament, Ken Yukihiro, and in, I said tournament, I meant league, but Ken Yukihiro, Rai Sato, and Shota Yasuoka, they brought this interesting green-black deck, which at first you're trying to sort of make out what's going on here. Three Carnage Tyrant and three Casualties of War on the top end, that's a lot of six drops. It's very kind of last format, and it strikes you as a little bit outdated. But then you take you have to take notice of the whole picture. And when you get into the mana base, you see that there are four copies of Field of Ruin. So what you have here is actually a land destruction deck. There are four Assassin's Trophies, there are three Casualties of War, and there are four Field of Ruins. And the idea is that Planeswalker decks, such as uh, the Jeskai Super Friends list, particularly featuring uh, things built around this Sarkin guy, Sarkin the Masterless that attack you with 20 Planeswalkers, they don't have very many basic lands. Another deck that has no basic lands, if they strictly net deck it, is Command the Dreadhorde. Right now this four color deck has no basic lands of any kind. I did a video on both of these decks, if you look back through my history, they're not that old. And you can check out the mana bases, and then just picture what happens when your opponent plays turn two, Assassin's Trophy, your land. Turn three, Field of Ruin, your land. And you can't go fetch a basic. Ooh. Uh, against red and against other popular decks in the meta, we use the old tried and true explore package to try to gain some life and just shut them down. And against control decks or other mid-rangey things, we unleash Carnage Tyrant to go over there and kill opposing planeswalkers at will. Casualties of War is a pretty epic over-the-top type card that can blow up a creature, an artifact, an enchantment, a land, and a planeswalker. In the current meta, most of the time you're hitting a planeswalker, a land, and a creature, but maybe, maybe, just maybe we can do even better. Nisu Who Shakes the World is a pretty crazy addition, as well as Massacre Girl as some fun ofs to make the deck do more insane things. And good old Vivian Reed is still in here, making the Explore package continue to do its thing. Some things that got cut from the deck, the traditional Golgari deck that is, is Find Finality, a card that doesn't really make sense anymore as it's a bit slow and now a relic of the past. Um, and with most of the battlefield that opponents are presenting these days being well, Planeswalkers find finality, finality especially, doesn't really help. And uh, instead, we'll just, if we need a sweeper, let's find this lady. She's up for the job. Going into the sideboard, we have four copies of Duress, two copies of Cast Down, two copies of Moment of Craving, two copies of the Elder Spell, Omnix's Cruelty, so five spot removal spells for creatures already, two Thrashing Brontodons, a Crucible of Worlds, and another Nissa who shakes the world. My take on the sideboard is that Duress comes in against the aggro decks, and you may also want it against red. I would take out cards like Llanowar Elves against red and Paradise Druid as they died at Goblin Chain Whirler far too easily. You may want to cut some, you definitely want to cut the two expensive cards like Casualties of War and some amount of Carnage Tyrant. And uh, probably Vivian Reed is a bit slow against Red, although taking out Experimental Frenzy is nice. But you can bring in the four Duress, the two cast downs come in against Red and Gruel, most likely. Moment of Craving certainly comes in against Red. Omnix's Cruelty comes in against Rekindling Phoenix, which I would expect Red decks to sideboard into anyway. So I would bring this in against Red most of the time, and anywhere else where extra removal or exile removal is necessary. The Elder Spell, of course, comes in against those Super Friends decks, and can probably replace Ravenous Chupacabra, who just doesn't do as much work in those matchups. Thrashing Brontodon comes in against Red, also against any white decks that use Conclave Tribunals, Prison Realms, and cards of that nature. Crucible of Worlds creates an endless Destroy Your Lands lock with Field of Ruin, which is hanging out right over here. 
and it comes in against any decks that that strategy, that the Field of Ruin Assassin's Trophy strategy is good against. Nissa, who shakes the world, comes in against green decks, other fair decks, other mid-range decks as an extra source of pressure and a way to go over the top and create a super strong battlefield. Also in games where Vivian Reed doesn't do much. If they're not playing any enchantments or flyers or artifacts, then Vivian digging up just more creatures probably isn't very important, but Anissa who shakes the frickin' world to beat them down probably is. All right, that's an introduction to the deck. Let's go play a match. Oh yeah, play first. Wow. Slowest hand possible. Um, Basically lose to anything early. All right, let's keep this. Another Llanowar Elf is certainly interesting because if the opponent kills our first Llanowar Elf, having a second could re-jumpstart our hand. Sort of like having a land on top. So I'll give it a try. It also gives like the god draw potential of Merfolk Branchwalker into land, into another Llanowar Elf, into a land for Nyssa. Hello. Land off the top. Can we do it? Are we the champions? We are. Holy crap. What is going on here? Can we draw land number three? Our opponent appears to be on the exact, a very similar plan. Oh man. We almost got there too. Let's see what we hit with Jade Light Ranger before deciding whether or not to attack with this elf. No. Um, still no land though. So I got a graveyard U2. Jeez, oh Pete, what is going on today? So, who's this land more important to? Me, I have Nyssa. All right, you've got four Llanowar Elves. We're ba like Massacre Girls in Armageddon. Our opponent did it, they, they freaking did it. Ugh. They did what we were trying to do. I'm so, I'm so green jelly, you don't even understand. Oh my god. Alright, so, the Massacre Girl thing is hilarious. The problem is it leaves the opponent with a Nyssa and one forest to animate, which we could then, what, next turn? What happens the turn after Massacre Girl? We take out the Nyssa, probably. No. Hmm. They just animate their last forest. But the thing is, I can pretty much kill... N I can kill Nyssa now using Nyssa who sh using the Assassin's Trophy. I don't like giving my opponent another land, but... Let's see here. Let's go animate this Overgrown Tomb. If we attack down this Nyssa, we could also blow up this Incubation Druid, attack the Nyssa down, Leave a blocker back for this. The weird thing is, do I want my opponent to block with this Incubation Druid? What I want them to do is actually pump the mana into this, so I want them to leave it alive. If I want them to leave it alive, I should attack face. And I need my Nyssa to live. So I should probably keep this Nyssa, uh, these creatures on defense. Well, I only need one. Something to block this forest. So, if I block this forest, I definitely want to trade with it and kill it. Or no, chumping it's okay. No, I would want to kill it. I would want to totally deflect it. So we'll leave back a Jade Light Ranger to block this forest so it can attack this Nyssa. And then we'll Assassin's Trophy my opponent's Nyssa. And then we'll Massacre Girl everything next turn. <laughs> it's so stupid. The real question is, does my opponent have another Nyssa? Like, how bad would that be here? Whew, what a mess. What a beautiful mess we've made. But what I want my opponent to spend their turn doing is activating the Incubation Druid, so I totally just chow down with Massacre Girl. Okay. Crassus. Draw two. It's a 5-5. Five, five. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so 
So first I'm deciding whether or not I should be attacking with some things, and I feel like I should. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. That casts Massacre Girl, and I'm not casting anything else this turn. So I can even send in the elves. But let's pull the tomb out of there so we definitely have the mana we need. The opponent will certainly block the tomb if we attack with it. It's going to die anyway. I wonder if that's a good reason to attack with the tomb and hold back an elf. Because that would make these creatures get in an extra damage. Elf. But then I don't have double black. That would be an epic fail here. Alright. Go. Let the bodies hit the floor. Oh my lord. Well done. Well done. Alright. Let's animate a land. So we can attack our opponent for 10 next turn. They're at 11. It's r we're almost there. Almost on that lethal. We can also cast Casualties of War next turn with tap, tap, untap, 6 mana. So if our opponent plays a creature or something here, we just boom. Oh, that's rude. That's so rude. Make sure we tap it for mana first, though. Another land off the top. Do we Casualties of War? This is a creature. This is a land. We can take all their green sources. All right, let's do it. The land for us. Oh wait, hold on, attack first? No, we can't because of the mana in the pool. Destroy target land, destroy target creature. No thanks on destroying a planeswalker. I like what I got. What an absurd game. Look at this board. This board is stupid! <laughs> How do our two, like, mid-rangey, rampy decks have, like, t three lands left between us? Alright. So, Crucible of Worlds can keep getting back Fields of Ruin, but our opponent has enough basics that I don't think that's particularly important here. Thrashing Brontodon doesn't really have things to take out. Cruelty can take out a Hydroid Crassus, but Cast Down is really good for the job, too. How about Duress taking away like mass manipulation and spells like that? Seems pretty important. Although our opponent has a lot of creatures and this can't hit Hydroid Crassus, I don't know how important Duress is. Maybe four is too many. We can crave some elves and get ahead that way. Uh, Incubation Druid is another important target like that, but we really want our own ramp stuff. I don't think that Wild Growth Walker is where we want to be at all. I think that's the wrong card for the job. Chupacabra is fine. Keeps killing mana creatures. Massacre Girl kind of proved herself. Vivian Reed gets stolen. I don't think that that makes Vivian Reed very compelling in the matchup. It doesn't have good targets aside from Hydroid Crassus. And then the opponent can just steal it and find more Crassus. So I think Vivian Reed's the wrong answer. Whether or not to go down to zero. Or just to keep one to take out a Crassus when we need to. We have other spot removal that's hopefully doing that job. So yeah, I like Vivian out. Nissa definitely uh, putting that pressure on the opponent was crucial. Getting to cast Carnage Tyrant, Casualties of War, things like that, crucial. Our opponent will probably board and negate to take on Nissa and Casualties of War, so having another Duress makes sense. But they also run their own Nissas, which makes the Elder spell pretty compelling. Maybe Moment of Craving is just the wrong way to fight their ramp strategies and their mana creatures, and Elder spell is better. Let's try that. Especially on the draw, fighting their ramp strategy seems like a losing battle. Paradise Druid in particular laughs at Moment of Craving. They get the use out of it before we even get to cast it. Seems good. No ramp creatures for us, which means we'll probably be well behind the 8-ball, but we have a trophy to kill the first Nyssa, and then hopefully a Casualties of War to kill the second or third one or whatever. No turn one elf. We were sp we dodged a bullet. 
The explorer creature is still hanging in there trying to hit, help us hit our land drops so that and attack enemy planeswalkers, keep some pressure on the opponent. They're not the most great, they're not the greatest targets for mass manipulation either. Entrancing Melody, yeah, it, it can happen, but it's okay. We, we get our value out of them when they play them, so if something's going to get stolen, that's what we want to get stolen. Opponent really thinking about that. Yep, hitting lands, doing things. At least our opponent's on a rampless uh, start to the game. So what kind of hand do they keep? I would guess that they have a negate. Something to play on turn two that they're holding up here. And fortunately we have a, enough creatures to put pressure on the negate. So we might be able to play around it okay. Or help us find a duress. Two more land, holy crap. Discard a card, they say. Well, I'm going to discard the one that is not a forest, which is the swamp. Because forests and Nyssa go together. Four mana goes what? Is it Chemistry's Insight time? Hey ya. Well, you can bet we're in for a fight with various... Uh, Planeswalkers here coming up. Our opponent kept a hand that's doing pretty much nothing. I think that negate, you can lock it in. But they're not even casting a Nyssa here. So what is up with this? Keep getting the damage in. How about Frilled Mystic? You think our opponent's on that card? Just leaving up four mana? Can we play around it? I think we certainly still have an opportunity to keep playing around Frilled Mystic. The opponent has to make a move here. And they don't want to. Perhaps they're planning to go Frilled Mystic with Negate to protect it, so that if we cast it down, that won't work. But that's okay. It's just a trade. The real advantage will be playing more Explore creatures. And they're taking the damage. Alright. I think I'll pay two life here to have both trophies and the cast down available. The opponent says, good game. Interesting. Are they the Nexus of Fate deck now? There's the Frilled Mystic that we played around. All right, let's see what they do. Nothing. Let's fight a cast down war on end step. Maybe the opponent will play a second Frilled Mystic. Okay, they do. Now, do we want to use trophies here? I don't think so. We've got a lot of ways to kill Nissas, but those really matter. I think we just trade these and play out more Explore creatures. I think that's all we have to do. Let the opponent hold their negate. We'll lead here in case, I don't know. Yeah, there's no stick. Graveyard that. Let's leave up Assassin's Trophy here. And a dress on top. Seems really good. With our opponent still having four cards in hand, I'm sure that dress can get through something. And we're the ones applying six points of pressure, so the opponent has to stop this attack. A large Hydroid Crassus, of course, is ideal. And here's Mass Manipulation. Take both of my dorks. Frustrating, but not the end of the world yet. Let's duress you. Negate out of there. Ooh, a Hydroid Crassus as well. That's brutal. We're about to fall way behind in the card race. I have to remove these sometime, and before the opponent plays a Crassus and draws a bunch of cards seems nice. Taking them down a land at least keeps Crassus one shorter, although they have another land in hand, so that's no big deal. Oh, I'm gonna wonder for probably a while if I had played this more aggressively what would have happened. 
We always want to take out the forest, not the hinterland harbor. Breeding pool counts as a forest, hinterland harbor doesn't. I wonder if the opponent drew that mass manipulation or set it up the whole time. Our duress was just a turn short. Three new cards. Big fresh Hydroid Crassus. Land off the top, doing nothing. Maybe I do need Vivian Reed, although Vivian Reed would have been, like, mass manipulated and frilled mystic for sure. Playing her here, though, is really good if the opponent doesn't draw another mass manipulation. Plus, we have the Elder Spell to ultimate her. Yeah, we might go back Vivian. Let's do this before our opponent gets to untap with their 6-6. Six, six. And pass turn. My opponent doesn't seem to have the Explore package. Some versions of this deck do. So, I'm just going to use the Field of Ruin now. Keep attacking some forests and stuff. I wonder how many basic islands the opponent runs. Maybe we can find out. We want forests for Nyssa. There's another island. Another Duress. Let's see what you got. Entrancing Melody down, Paradise Druid, and another Basic Island. They have at least four, so that's a lot to try to take on. Let's keep taking the hits from the Branch Walker, because Ravenous Chupacabra can compete with that. Okay, Incubation Druid might be a card worth a trophy. Opponent might be playing around Massacre Girl by holding this Paradise Druid. No attacks. Okay. Full control mode? Sure. I mean, let them have their 3-5. It's not that different from their 3-2, except that how it trades with Chupacabra. Our flood has been pretty vicious. I think we had the tools to win the game, but man, did we flood down the stretch. Alright, let's shorten the clock with an Assassin's Trophy. There's a Paradise Druid. Casualties of War. It's not nothing. You and you. Did the opponent top deck another Frilled Mystic? So they did. Alright. Now we have to draw Massacre Girl. And you see the, the serious downside of the Elder Spell rotting in hand. I mean, I'm grateful my opponent didn't draw Nyssa, but man, is this a bad card, this matchup. The opponents, they only draw Hydrate Crisis in this situation, right? There we go. Okay. And there is a Chupacabra, but it's too little too late. Let's go see if the opponent reveals any other of their shiny cards out of a need to share. Nope. They get it. You turn them sideways. You don't show your opponent what's in your hand. Good job. All right. Elder Spell certainly didn't... Like, with all the Planeswalker removal, I'm probably overdoing it with the Elder Spell, and it certainly showed itself to be an awkward card that game. Cast down's fine. We did see the negates. It does feel like Vivian should come back even if it can get mass manipulated. Just thinking about what else to do here. Maybe cast down's just the wrong take. Maybe we have enough removal otherwise. Yeah, maybe this is just too reactive and we want to be a bit more on the beatdown strategy. Especially with duress. Alright. Um, Chupa. 
Chupa's also pretty reactive. It's a good card. But yeah, let's just get the Vivians in there. See what happens. If the opponent steals them... Man, I really do kind of want Elder Spell with Vivian Reed, though. Like I said, if the opponent steals them. But I guess if they steal them, then I'm in trouble anyway. Alright. Let's go for it. Ramp into Planeswalkers. Overpower. And maybe Carnage Tyrant can make a dang appearance. Can't mass manipulate that. Alright. Duress. Ramp. Stuff. Let's do this. Boom. <laughs> Your hand is now all land. Which always means they draw Hydroid Crassus. Lock it in right now, folks. Hydroid Crassus is coming off the top. Okay. So you can play a Breeding Pool tapped? Interesting. Nice draw. Um, I think we, so we can get Vraska down and kill the Lanoir Elf. But then the opponent just attacks down the Vraska, then we Chupa that. We can also Chupa the Lanoir Elf. I guess that's a little better. Because then we have a 2-2 to both attack with or defend Vraska. But man, Paradise Druid's a good one. That Hexproof, right? Letting you hold up Frilled Mystic on turn four or turn three, nothing anybody can do about it. But we see second Paradise Druid. All right. Uh, let's try to hit land drops rather than throw down Vraska, who only pluses up right now, and try to get Carnage Tyrant going. There's a land. There is a Druid. So next turn is... We're going to five mana. If we top deck a land, it's straight to Carnage Tyrant. I think that's good enough reason to bin this. Let's get Chupa going. Um, pay two life. Let's hold up a trophy. I think it's worth it. If the opponent plays a Nissa, we're going to want to kill that thing. Oh, do nothing time. Do frilled mystic time. Carnage Tyrant loves this. But let's start with sending our creatures over. Thirteen. Suck this, frilled mystic. Alright. Negate. Also funny. Um, so playing this out just probably gets it countered. We want to get the opponent to make a move. Holding up trophy, maybe there's a time and place for that. The opponent might flash in Mystic and try a triple block. And then they might have a negate for the trophy, which would be pretty sad. At this point, let's send team. Let's put the pressure on the life total. Ooh, they are picking blocks. And that's interesting because they could be trying to get themselves to a mass manipulation to steal these to block the Carnage Tyrant, but not going to happen. All right. Happy to go to damage here. So do we press the issue with trying to resolve a Varaska Golgari Queen? The opponent is going to have to spend mana or they're going to die to Carnage Tyrant. So with that as my plan, I'm not going to play this yet. We're going to wait. Five mana, what do you have? Good old Hexproof gets there. Well, I had a lot of fun playing this Golgari land destruction mid-range thing. We never really got to shift the land destruction plan into high gear unless you count Massacre Girling, all those lands and elves. Uh, it was an exciting match. The Nissa Steel Yo Girl deck, as I've heard it called, that's been going around. The Blue Green Ramp Mass Manipulation deck is a ton of fun as well and probably worth a look at at a future video. And I'd like to thank you all for hanging out with me and quickly tell you about ways that you can support the channel. Father's Day is coming up and every year you, the loved ones, want to get you something you actually want and you come up with, I could use some jeans. Well, 
This year, tell them to go to flipsidegaming.com and use the promo code CGB to get 10% off of all the gaming supplies you want. Or check out hauntedflower.com with thousands of t-shirt designs, including Magic the Gathering apparel that's officially licensed and totally legal. The promo code CGB gets you 10% off there as well. So... Get what you really want for Father's Day. Some sweet cards, maybe a playmat, maybe some Modern Horizons pre-ordered, and a t-shirt from hauntedflower.com. There's also some sweet wallets, sleep pants, other Magic the Gathering items. Get 10% off at both sites with the promo code CGB. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.